Hello, this is Dylan Downs, and uh, this t I'm going to continue my Peshitta series with a study with a little look at the Aramaic English New Testament by Andrew Gabriel Roth. Um, it's a Messianic Jewish translation with uh, it. Well, here's a little clip. Here's a little piece of it. It's not really true interlinear, but he calls it an interlinear. It's more of a bilingual translation. It includes the Peshitta, the Aramaic text, and in, in, in Hebrew letters. And it conforms closer to his translation. It's not actually an observable Bashita text, but it's a co it's a basically a compilation of several. And let's take a look right here. This is the English translation right here, and this is obviously the Aramaic and the Hebrew letters. Um, Roth is a Messianic Jewish teacher, and it's interesting. I'm not a Trinitarian. If you've seen it in my other videos, that's one thing I like about his translation. He's a very straight he's very he gives a lot of he's not this is not a trinitarian study bible it's made, it's made for the for it's made for netzadi jews the netzadi that means a nazarene and that's basically the that's ba it's basically almost a refounding of what they believe the what some jews believe the original faith is more like but unfortunately his commentary is a lot like is very he 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 seems almost obsessed with uh, conforming gentiles to the torah which is something I very disagree. I'm very much disagree with. I'm. I believe the law was ended by was ended by Christ. But um, his translation that doesn't really affect his translation very much. But there are some places where it does. Uh, let's look at a. Let me find uh, Colossians in here. He has the New Testament in a different order than uh, it's a more of a messianic order, I guess you could say. His uh. The epistles in his New Testament start out with Hebrews, because of the gospel going from coming first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Oh, it's taking forever. Okay, uh, almost there. Okay. Now, uh, Colossians two sixteen, he translates it as no, let no pet. Let no pagan therefore judge you about food and drink, or about the distinctions of festivals and new moons and Shabbats. Um, he inserts the word pagan, in a, basically in a way to make it seem like it conforms more with the law. But he makes it, it's in, parenth it's in parentheses, so it makes it clear this is his interpretation, not, in, not actually in the text. Here's a footnote that he has in that verse. It says, The body of Mashiach is not to be concerned with the judgments of those who are outside the Malkut, or kingdom of Elohim, uh, that is, those who don't know the Torah or Mashiach. It is clear, given the location of, these, of this audience that the fa and the fact that Rav Shaul and the Apostle Paul always have references to Jews directly, that Shaul is addressing the local talk of the pagans whose religion dominates this region. It's pretty clear based on the context, though, that, that, that Andrew Roth, the translator, his, trans his interpretation is wrong because Paul is talking about the, the talk that the Jews were making against the formerly pagan Christian converts. Um, he translates uh, the Hebrew, uh, I mean the Aramaic, uh, Yeshua Meshicha, as Yeshua the as Yeshua the Mesh the Mashiach. Um, he um, very literal translation. There's some parts, uh, like in John 17, where you can really tell where he gets pretty down down and gritty with the translation as far as literalism goes. Uh, let's listen to now. Let's listen to John. Uh, 17 verse 5 and I glorify me my father with you and that glory that I had with you from before the world was very literal translation uh, and uh, he doesn't include the um, story of the adulteress in John 8 because it was not in the Peshitta text that he used um, so the verses are numbered the traditional verses are in, are just in parentheses but it can it's, it might make it a little confusing for some people um, his uh, let's read John one verse one in his in his Peshitta translation. In the beginning was the Milta, and the Milta was with Elohim, and Elohim was that Milta. In Aramaic, that's Berashit Adohi Chua Milta, Hu Milta Adohi Chua Lua Alaha Wa Alaha Adohi Chua Hu Milta. Uh, this is the first verse of John Aramaic. I might have mispronounced some of it, but. Hey, I'm still learning. Give me a break. But um, his translation—it's uh, 
He leave the milta I mean, is what was what is mostly translated as word. Uh, he li- he he lives in a footnote. Uh, milta has no direct has no direct English equivalent. It can mean word, manifestation, instance, or substance, among other things. In this context, it may be left may be best left, best left untranslated. And he translates there, make word for God, Allah, as Elohim for the in the Hebrew word into the Hebrew word for God, Elohim. That's the more common Hebrew word for God. It's in plural form, which is basically the plural of majesty. And uh, he also in the air in the Greek New Testament you have a it you have the um, you have two words for Lord. One is for God and one is for man only. I mean one is for God alone and one is for man and God. There's Mar and Mar, which means human, which is a human master or Lord, and the, and then there's Mar Yah, which means Lord or Master Yahweh. Roth, unlike Lam, unlike Lamza, makes a distinction between the Mar and Mar Yah. Let's look in Ma- in, in the book of Matthew, verse I think it's verse twenty-two. Well, not verse twenty-two, but it's in the chapter twenty-two. <coughs> the um, well, let's go ahead and get to this. Okay, Matthew 22, verse uh, verse 41. Now all the Pharisees were assembled. Yeshua asked them and said, What do you say about the Mashiach? Who is he the son of? They were saying to him, The son of Dawid. He said to them, How, did, how then did Dawid and the Spirit call him Master Yahweh? For he said that Master Yahweh said, for he said that Master Yahweh said to my master, You sit at my right hand until I place your enemies under your feet. Therefore, if Dawid calls him Master Yahweh, how is he his son? And no one was able to give him an answer, and no one dared to, dared to question him again from that time on. Um, in the Greek, in that verse, he uses he uses a to uses the same word for for both for both human lord and divine lord, kyrios, which may, which can refer to either God or man. And uh, the there's other places in the in the Aramaic New Testament that I'm going to read real quick that actually make the distinction. That actually, make, you can refer to Jesus as Mar Yah or Master Yahweh, clearly declaring his deity. Let's start with Luke two eleven. It's a unique it's a unique way of declaring his deity that the new that the Greek New Testament doesn't do. Uh, Luke two eleven says, "For do you, for born to you all today is the is the Savior that is Master Yahweh the Mashiach in the city of Dawid." The Messiah is Master Yahweh. That's read Philippians two eleven. In the Greek, that says the Lord, the Master, the 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 Messiah, the Christ, this Christ, the is Christ the Lord. That's what it says in the original Greek. Now the Peshitta and uh, in this and in, in Philippians two eleven, it says uh. That the it says uh, and every it says uh, we'll start to Tim. That at the name of Yeshua every knee should bow of beings in heaven and on earth and are and and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Master Yahweh is Yeshua the Mashiach, to the glory of Elohim his Father. So this is clearly a verse that states that Jesus is God, but um, this is a very good translation. Um, I recommend you order one. But be leery of the uh, of the uh, very. Uh, he has some pretty radical theology, like theology, like I was saying. His uh, he's very. He refers to the to Christians who don't obey the Torah as Christo pagans, and uh, but he has he also and he also has an extensive appendix of uh, the very scholarly. Uh, let me show you what all the appendix is. <laughs> All of this right here is appendix that I have my hand on right here. All of that. 
And um, so it makes it about the size of a average Bible, and it's only a New Testament. Which I guess also added to that is the fact that it include that it's a parallel translation, including the Aramaic and the English translation of it. Um, another thing about Roth's translation from Acts, uh, from Acts, uh, from Matthew verse from Matthew one to Acts fifteen, it uses the Pauline and interlinear as its base text, and it's basically almost like an like a editing it to fit the mess to fit the Messianic Jewish stuff, and uh, like I said, making Allah Elohim and stuff like that. And, uh, but, uh, it's not a perfect translation. Sometimes we're all, let's just, theology affect, affect it, but nowhere to the extent of George Lombs. It's really a, it's one of my favorite translations, my second favorite translation of the Peshitta right now, I think. But, um, I really recommend you get one. Uh, and from, from, uh, from Acts 15 to Revelation 22, it uses the Murdoch translation as the base text. Which we'll study the Murdoch translation. We're probably I'm not going to get into the Pollyanna and Erlinger because I don't have it in hard copy, so it'd be harder for me to study. But um, I'll leave a link to the Pollyanna and Erlinger and, and a sample text of uh, the Roth translation. The only book that Roth actually translated himself, I think, is um, is the uh, is the Book of Galatians, based on what I heard. Um, Murdoch used the Western Peshitta, which has d different readings from the Peshitta in some places. And whenever the and whenever Roth, James, whenever the Murdoch translation disagrees with the Eastern Peshitta, Roth edits it and makes it fit with the Eastern Peshitta. So that's an interesting thing. So it's basically completely it completely from conforms to the Eastern Peshitta pretty much. Um, but like I was saying, it's a great translation. I highly recommend it. And I just want to I just hope you really enjoy the video, and I hope it moves you to possibly buy it. I'll leave a link to where you can purchase it, and I'll. Uh, to the sample text and to the polyonor linear. You all have a blessed day. God bless you.